First off, this is neat to see the two of you together in the same place. It doesn't happen often. Uh, no. So <laughs> he, when, he's when. going his way 200 <laughs> days a year. I'm going my way 200 <laughs> days a year. And so it's yeah, and, and that's a little bit of the, the mis, misinformation out there. You know, I mean, I say this jokingly and seriously. You've been married 40 plus years. I've been married 40 plus years. Uh, we know how to manage relationships, and I think we've been together for 15. So we're sort of like semi-married. <laughs> At the end of the day, when we're on the road, you like ever have an argument with your wife? Just occasionally. I think you and I have too. <laughs> this so, morning, I think. So you know, I mean, it, 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 do you really, always agree? No, we don't always agree. And that's we part agree of the deal. to disagree. Yeah, and and that's and to his point, that's that's part of this deal. This notion that we have no relationship and stuff like that is garbage. Mm. And, you know, the way we've gotten through 15 years has been pretty good. Yeah. And we've had our highs and lows, and we've had some things that haven't gone exactly the way we wanted to. But by and large, I'm sitting next to a guy that I brought here 15 years ago, and we've been together just fine. So yeah. I'm, not a, I'm not a guy that gets in coaches' business, and any of my coaches, and they'll all tell you that. <laughs> so we let them do their work and try and stay out of their way. Do I wish I could be around more? Yeah, and I probably, I'll work at that. That's on me. But at the end of the day, I trust him to do his job, and we always want to make adjustments to get better. So let's put the notion of no relationship out the door. <laughs> yeah, they, it's, there are so many things out there that aren't accurate. Correct. You can't defend all this stuff. You just have to let it go, and hopefully people, logic, look at it and say, look, they've done a lot of good together. And like you said, there's been some really high highs mm -hmm. And there have been some low lows, yep. but that's part of athletics and dealing with that, trying to get better, trying to figure out how do we do this together? What do we need to do? I think one of the things that I've said about the meeting was Mitt saying, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. What can we do mm -hmm. to help you get where you're trying to get this thing? And we talked about three or four things, mm -hmm. but that's when you're coaching, that's important stuff. You've had you've had your year in meeting. You kind of brought it up a little bit. What was it like, and what do you look at going forward? Well, I, I think we, we always assess the different things. You know, you assess, hey, where are we in terms of roster, staff, the principles of our program, the things that we're trying to do. There's two things that we always are principal to, and that's competitiveness in our education of our student athletes, and and that's a piece of what we are. That is a component for every department we have here, and that's not unusual to men's basketball. Uh, we talked about things that, that we want to get better at. And, you know, we talked about the, the things that are out there that, that are the elephants in the room, so to speak. Um, Cal's averaged 27 wins a year since he's been here. Um, we get to a spot this year, we had some incredible victories. And then we get to March and we stubbed our toe a couple times. And there's no mystery in that. We've had a couple times down the stretch that we want to be better in March. There's no, there's no mystery in that either. Our fans know what the standard is. We know what the standard is. And that's part of it. We, the, the mantle we've been entrusted with is critically important to both of us. And so we talked about that. Um, and that's important. So how do we change that dynamic in a world of NIL and transfer space and the portal, older rosters? We talked about roster. We talked about toughness. We talked about defense. I'll let him address that. that he had some great, great things to say about all of those. Well, so. when we talk roster. First of all, I got to meet with the guys to figure out how I'm going to help them. Mm -hmm. Who's staying? Who wants to put their name in? Who's definitely leaving? Um, yes, we got to get older. Sometimes it's within the program, mm -hmm. um, but other times it's you got to get transfers to come in and make you older. And we've done it with Reed and with Nate and with Oscar, with Kellen, um, this year with Antonio and Trey. We've done it. But it takes us longer because anybody transferring wants to know, is so-and-so coming back? Are they here? It's not one answer mm -hmm. to how do you do this? Because there have been teams that have taken a bunch of transfers. And one year they did okay. And then the next year they fell flat on their face. Mm -hmm. There's no one way. What I think with the current environment, you can have like we've done five freshmen starting, we've done that before. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have freshmen, they've got to be supplemented with some veteran, talented players. You know, when you're 19 and you're playing against a 26-year-old, it's there's a big difference there. So roster management, we talked about it, and it's, there's no one answer. There's no mm -hmm. one thing that 
this will work. Um, but I think we're close to being what we want, but we also know we got to get older. And we talked about it real quick before yeah. you did. We also talked about the toughness and the defense. You had some great, great thoughts on that. I'd like to share well, that with them. Well, you know, I never have worked on defense in the summer. Mm -hmm. Now, we did conditioning and we did some mental toughness stuff, but never did defense, and we were always fine. Mm -hmm. But now I'm looking this summer and saying, this may be where we try to get the foundation set defensively without wearing them out. You don't want the season to be June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. All of a sudden, it's a 10-month season. You'll lose them by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. But we have to do it in a way that we set mm -hmm. the foundation. The toughness, some of it's recruiting toughness. And I think the class that we just brought in, a bunch of these mm -hmm. guys have more toughness uh, to their game. But let me tell you that we had a skilled freshman group, yeah. but that was lacking, and we knew it. We tried to outscore people. Offensively, I want to keep playing the way we played. Everybody enjoyed it, including me, mm -hmm. including the players, yeah. including the fans. TV, we were, everybody was watching mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. like because they said, man, are they fun to watch. But you got to guard, and I've done this long enough to know you're in danger if you have that. That yeah. means you can't miss shots. Mm -hmm. When you really guard, you can miss shots. You can play bad offensively and still win the game. Mm -hmm. I thought we could get to that. We got better, yeah. but we always knew it was, it was our Achilles heel. So you said the players were on your radio show, you said they were kind of anxious. Do you feel that's just the youth? It, does it take the... Probably. Yeah. I mean, sometimes the guys around those players mm -hmm have got to be the steadying force. I mean, Trey had an unbelievable year and then got hurt. So now we were trying to say, we need you to be that guy, mm -hmm. but he hadn't played for three weeks, mm -hmm. four weeks. Mm -hmm. um, Antonio had an unbelievable year, but that's not who he is. He's not the most talkative. He just when goes and gets his job done, mm -hmm. um, works in the gym, lives in there, and he had a heck of a year. Mm -hmm. So I think part of it is that. Um, but, you know, you, when you're being chased, you can be a little bit anxious. And the other team plays with house money. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, they're banking shots in, they're doing stuff, and now that's when you need the veteran guy to step in and settle stuff. Another thing I think that, that Cal talked about something, and when I look back, when, when we had the, some really amazingly tough teams, and you talked about physical tough teams, they were guys that were grinding in the, and, and they, we defined hard for them in the summer. And I think that's one of the things you talked about yesterday was defining hard in the summer. What does that look like? And getting in the weight room and doing some of the things, not just changing a body, but changing your mind. And how do you do that? And that yeah. was important. And another thing I think that, that, I, that I shared with, with Cal yesterday, we talked about the leadership qualities and who is the guy that's the step up leader and that vocal person, the captain of the team that wears the C on the jersey. And, there's some ways we can do to, we can assist to help out with that and some of the things that we do internally in our department and he has some things that he wants and we incorporate those things together and hopefully find some things to help him find the leaders that he needs. What do you both hope BBN will see moving forward? Well, I want just like we've been top 10, regular season, mm -hmm. making our run, uh, but then the postseason. My standard has always been you're making a deep run. You're one of those teams. Um, we seem to be going in as one of those teams, but we, we got knocked off. Now it's time. Let's step up. Let's try some stuff defensively. Let's settle in on what we're doing. Let's keep le being that offensive team that's hard to guard. Um, we talked about leadership within. I've said for years, only in, an empowered team, when it's their team, not my team, that takes inside leadership. And when I know they're empowered, now I know I have something. We gotta get back to, to that. And you know, we, what hurt me the most, losing that game and knowing fans traveled, knowing they traveled to the SEC and they spent money and maybe money they didn't have to be there. I know that, I've never taken it lightly. I've been all over this state and met all kind of people from all walks of life and they all love Kentucky basketball. 
but losing there for the fans killed me. But for this team, I mean, they cried after this game. Mm -hmm. And for me, I didn't get to keep coaching them. And I love coaching them and trying to figure out things that we could get over the hump with, mm -hmm. whether it be toughness, rebounding, defense, and how we could stay together offensively. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm going to miss this team. Mm -hmm. Now I've got to have individual meetings and figure out, all right, where can I help everybody? Who is going through a process? Who is coming back? Maybe there's some guys already know that they're going. But we'll have those talks in the next day or so. So that's one of the things you start year 16. You got the number two recruiting class coming in. Now you got to figure out who's going pro, who might decide to go into a portal. You've got to get into the portal. Uh, how do you approach all this now? Well, you have staff meetings, but you've, you've, our stuff is usually slower. You like mm -hmm. to make it faster. Okay, we signed five guys, mm -hmm. transfers. But what if guys are coming back and now all of a sudden you're not fair to the guys transferring in, you're not fair to the guys coming back. Our stuff is a little bit slower. We'll have, my guess, three, four guys, maybe more, put their name in the NBA draft to get their information and maybe go through the process, maybe not, but that would be up to them. Mm -hmm. Now you figure out, okay, who's here and who's not and what do we have to do? I think we got to get tougher anyway, mm -hmm. but that guy may also, that we want, yeah. is in the NBA putting his name in mm -hmm. to see where he stands. And so that may come a little bit slower. But like I said, the, the, the players that we brought here in transfer mm -hmm. have all been great kids have all been done everything they're supposed to do, both academically and on the court in their work and their team teammanship. Um, so we want to continue down that path. I mean, we, we talked, we had a stretch where, if you remember, Brandon Knight makes the buzzer beater against Princeton, mm -hmm. or we're, Aaron makes it against Michigan. I mean, we beat Wichita State, the kid missed the last shot. Um, and so we advanced and we were four years and five in the final four of the national championship game. We, that's who I want us to be. Um, my whole career has been about that. Uh, but I've used the season to prepare for the postseason. Mm -hmm. I've used the conference tournament to prepare for postseason. Everything's about ranking and seeding. The better your seed the better chance you have of advancing. No guarantees anymore. Right. With mm -hmm. older players, 25, 26, 27, you don't know, but it gives you your best chance. And I want to continue to do that with this team we got coming in. When we figure out everything together, the meeting we had, the things that we talked about, mm -hmm. how to help this program and all that, I think we're on a good path. Um, and, and now it becomes go to work. Mm -hmm. which is basically, I would say, all we know. Yeah. Let's grind it. Let's go. Do you think that the transfer portal needs to be, like a certain position needs to be older on the court for you? you? you I would like to bring in somebody that's experienced and that can lead, but we don't know who's coming back. So sure. we may have guys with experience that are older that live through this that are physical and they're coming back. Mm -hmm. So you may not need three. You may need one, you may need two. I can't tell you right now, you know, that's pretty fluid until we get together and figure out where is everybody. The other thing, Keith, I said, one of the things that we did last two summers, we went on, on summer tours. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, the focus is a little bit different as, as yes. Cal referred to. Last couple summers, we've been focused a little offensively. So and, figure and, out how to score and point. team building. Yeah, and team building rather than maybe the grind and the, the toughness and the, and the physicality, what we're trying to create on, uh, on the defensive end of the floor. Mm -hmm. So a lot of pieces of the puzzle change if you're, if you're in your own area working at that a little bit and it changes. Now we've have seen some guys change their bodies and that doesn't, but sometimes that doesn't exactly equate to um, the other things of toughness and defense on the mm -hmm. court. But I think that that's a really fascinating point about where we've spent our last two summers. Mm -hmm. we, we talked. I said, you know, they were good team building. Uh, last year in Toronto really gave us a heads up of what we had. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, all right, let's, and we've had grinding summers mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. I mean, where we're like, 
And my worry becomes it's a long season, guys. Let's make sure we're not overdoing this. But we can set a great foundation. Mm -hmm. The one thing I know with the teams that I've coached, they'll get in the gym and shoot. Mm -hmm. So let's, we can worry about the other. They'll, you know they're going to get in there and shoot. I doubt without us in there they're going to work on defense mm -hmm. or <laughs> slides or close outs or rotations <laughs> or pick and roll defense where right. we can try to get ahead. So, I, you know, we sit down as a staff, and I sit down as a head coach, and I look at everything. Um, what we can do better, what we need to do different, um, what we talked about, here's what I need, the athletics department, here's what we need mm -hmm. to keep this going to where we want to go. And I'll say it again, I mean, every game we go to is sold out. Every, the, the TV stuff is off the chain. Uh, CBS, please, we need you. We need, uh, I, now, let's break through back to where we were and let's get this postseason. And again, we're doing the stuff we need to do now. We need to break through. And I'll say this, we, and in terms of, and Cal hit it on his coach's show the other night, he talked about the standard. There's no one that has missed the standard. We understand that. Mm -hmm. Um, we've won six SEC tournaments with Cal. We've won six regular season titles. We've been to four Final Fours, seven Elite Eights. It's not that we don't know how to get there. Um, we've hit a patch where we haven't, mm -hmm. and that is not lost on us. Um, he and I are a little bit competitive. Um, we certainly like to win. Uh, that has been in our DNA from the beginning of his career and mine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we didn't come to this program to sit here and say, hey, let's just see if we can casually walk through this thing and, and sashay all the way to the end of the deal. Um, I want to win. Mm -hmm. And I told him, and I will share this, and I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this. Whatever we do in our careers, both of us want to exit well. Whatever you do. Um, not a lot of people in our industry, in our enterprise of college athletics, get to exit the way you want to exit. And I want us to be able to exit well and be able to say we left it in a really good spot for the people that came behind us. Mm -hmm. What ends up happening a lot of times is it gets left on the side of the track in a, in, a, in a heap and a mess. And you say, good luck to the next guy. That's not what would either one of us want yeah, to have we, happen. Uh, we want we to wanna be good caretakers for the program yeah. and we want to leave it in the right spot for uh, the next person. Make it uh, future proof yep. that everything's in order. Come in and coach and recruit. Mm -hmm. You got what you need here. Um, let me, let me, one other thing. I mean, everybody knows I care about the kids. They know how I am with that. But it's not a contest, does he care about the program? Come on now. Mm -hmm. This program, I put my heart and soul in this program. So yes, I care. What we do is a reflection of how we are and how much we care. The state, I believe I've proven who I am across this state. I've been probably, there's too many counties to say I've been to every county. I've never seen a place with this many counties. 120. <laughs> so, I mean, but I have, well, I could say I've driven through every county. I could say that. Um, so it's not a contest. Well, he cares about the kids, so he doesn't care. Or we all care about these kids academically, their future. And, and if it were someone's son, how would you want us to deal with them? not worry about him we're just trying to win or this is all about no this is about these kids and it's about our program it's about our fans it's about our state it's all of that and i've said many times you cheat the position that i sit in if all you care about are x and o's you cheat the position mm -hmm. and i can promise that i'm not going to cheat the position mm -hmm. i'm going to give everything to every phase of this. You know, and we, we talk a lot, or you hear it said, and I think that was well said in terms of the ability to not say we care about one more than the other. The front of the jersey means an awful lot to the people of the state. It is not lost on either one of us. Um, it is an absolute um, birthright for many people in the state, and, and there's not been a person that has taken that lightly in, in our department. We keep talking about being great caretakers. And uh, that is, uh, I, I've been here, Key's been here 15 years, I've been here 22. 
I don't know how long you have to be to be considered a resident. <laughs> you know, I think, I think you get status after just a period of time. Right. Uh, I've got, in my family, children that have got three degrees from this place. So we believe in it with all our heart. And this notion that um, it is, is not as important to either one of us um, as it needs to crazy. be is crazy. It's crazy. How about Pittsfield? I went to Pittsfield so many times, they wanted my Social Security number. They said, you had to be paying tax out here. So, yeah, we're, I'm still loving it, enjoying it, and, and tell you that uh, um, we're going to get after it and have another really good team. And now it's let's break through. Let's, let's be what we've been. Um, the Maxi team we talked to, I'm yeah. still sick. Mm. That yeah. team was one of those teams in the season it's called up. You know, and, and I, I say it again, you know, we're ranked fifth, ranked ninth this year. You know, let's do it. But we got to now know why we're doing this. And I pretty clear this year to this team, everything we do. And I said it when I came here, they don't put banners up for anything except national titles here. Mm -hmm. I, and if you're coaching here, you better get that. And I get it. Yeah. Um, now it's let's, let's get back there. Different day and age to say you can do it seven times in a row or ten times or too many teams. Too, it's a different deal. The key is, are you up at bat every single year? And then let's break through. And, and we, everybody talks about change. I don't like the word change. I like ad adapt and adjust. And if there's ever been a, a person that has been able to adapt and adjust in the game, Cal has. I remember when he first came here, he made the comment, hey, we're going to have to adapt to this new era of one and done. And everybody sort of like, look, cocked their head and looked at him like, what's one and done mean? I wish some of those would have stayed, but go ahead. I get it. I get it. But my point is, he adapted. He was ahead, and all of a sudden, the reality of that world and the changes in the NBA rules, he adapted to and got ahead of the game on that. We will have to adapt and to adjust yep. to a new world of NIL and transfers and that meshing of please that. Please let's get rid of but, this but COVID it, stuff, right. please. And correct, and I agree. We don't have to have nine-year veterans out there anymore. <laughs> this is ridiculous. So we got to have people that played for five years max, and that's yeah, the deal. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. at the end of the day, no it's one. It's not the case right now. Where so everyone we else, they say, well, everyone else is adapted to the, the NIL transfer world. Okay, true. Mm -hmm. But everyone else is not Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And they don't have the unique set of issues that we have with the, the skill set of guys coming in that have the ability to go to the NBA and then deal with the transfer timelines in the NBA combines like we do. Ours is unique. Mm -hmm. And for no one to recognize that is baffling to me. So it but is. But I wouldn't want it any other way. No, and I get you, it. This is, this is. But if there's someone knows. that can figure out how to adapt to that, he will figure that out. We, we, Mitch, what you're saying is so true. The, the, the number of freshmen, the number of transfers, um, and all the stuff that I've done, as you know, has taken time. I don't just rush in to do it. You, you got to sit back and look because people that have rushed one year, they've done well. Mm -hmm. And then the next year they're in the tank. That's not Kentucky. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like, like NIL. I was really slow to see because I needed to see where this was playing out. Now I think we have as good as anybody the overall stuff. Now it's got to keep growing because the environment and until adapting the, to it. And until the rules change, and they will change again. Mm -hmm. They're going to change. And when they do, we're going to have to figure out that landscape one sure. more time. And that's, Hopefully we get the five years to play for in the, like the yes, old days. And the mm -hmm. oldest player is 22, yes. 23. But it may not. Yeah. And if it doesn't, we'll yeah. do something different. You're 16, getting it underway. I know it starts with player meetings, and you got one of those, so let's get you to it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Keith. Appreciate you, man. <laughs>